Hello. Hi, everybody. Up and up today. Let's just go to. For us to go live. No. But it will be chapter 16. No, you didn't finish. How's everybody doing? All well? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma Thank How you. about you? Yes, <laughs> Good. It's, it's the day before the break. <laughs> <laughs> yes, short break. I'm yes, not saying so anything we... because I have two meetings now tomorrow. So. <laughs> Uh, but remember, on, uh, on the 23rd is the 50th anniversary, sorry, the 30th, sorry, 30th anniversary of uh, World Pranic Healing Foundation, Inc. Manila. So we're going to have some celebration, basically a Twin Hearts in the morning, open to all, and we're going to have another session in the evening uh, with the Acharyas. Uh, it's a working day, so that's why we're just trying to make it early in the morning and evening, so you can still work during the rest of the day. Right in the middle of our break. Right in the middle of our break. Congratulations, yeah. Sumi. For and Amit too. The anniversary. Atma Namaste. Oh, yes, to everyone here as well. Atma Namaste and congratulations. For what? Uh, for the 30th year of World Pranic Healing. We're all part of it, especially if you're in Pranic Healing. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Same to you. <laughs> Thanks, same to you too. So, shall we close our eyes, connect to the palate, inhale and exhale, relax. Let's be aware again that we're here to enhance our knowledge, to have a deeper and clearer understanding of these great teachings. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chua Kotswilot Maha Guruji Mele, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, to all the great teachers, masters of theosophy, the great beings of light, knowledge, wisdom, especially to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, Archangel Michael, to the Lord Christ, to all the invisible and spiritual, spiritual helpers present with us, to the angels and beings of communication, our respective internets and Wi-Fis, to our soul and divine self. We humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your knowledge, for your wisdom, helping us to have greater clarity and understanding all through the session, to have greater, deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us also to assimilate this knowledge and to use it to become better divine instruments in your service. Let thy will be done, not the urges of our lower nature. I humbly offer myself as an instrument to do your work. We thank you with gratitude, respect and love. Inhale and exhale, absorb all the blessings and the energies. You may slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste. Welcome again. Atma Namaste, Sumi and Amit and everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So I noticed uh, Bhagya, uh, Jay, are all in pink and it, actually this is pink. It looks like an orange, dark, bright orange, not red. It's the same pink sort of. Yes, sort of also has a little bit of pink there. Anyway, I just know. All right, so. So may I have one question? Sure. Because uh, in last uh, session we uh, discussed about the seven rays and the vertical divisions and uh, the horizontal divisions. All right. Right. Then a um, uh, question is that how it has been defined the seven rays or there is a vertical division or a, ho a horizontal division. Why the horizontal division is not a vertical division and the vertical division is not a horizontal division? It can Why be, specifically? No, I think it's just a way of expressing to say that there are different ways of looking at it. So they just taken the horizontal and the vertical and given you the option. Uh, it could just, be the as well. It doesn't have to be. It's just to say that there are two factors that are considered okay. at this point. 
just to uh, specifically we have to differentiate two things yeah. that's why they have just mentioned vertical yeah. and the horizontal just like x axis y axis that's it right that's it yeah no Don't specific reason behind it detail, it might be excessive yeah. then you'll go into why is the sun round why is the planet round why is the there are many more things <laughs> all philosophical topic, topic. or there are uh, because i just wanted to know whether uh, there is any such specific reason behind this no it just to uh, signifies there is a two, we have to just differentiate the two things that's it probably okay, okay. Uh, now whether the four devarajas are associated with the four elements um, as far as i know not really it's got to do with the subplanes right so each deva is from one it says here very clearly it is one of the four etheric subplanes of physical matter the problem is they haven't mentioned where and which one right so which subplane okay Have so they mentioned it in another book uh, if you ask master chua this is the answer you want to get <laughs> because this was discussed to a certain extent not the whole thing the answer is uh, it's beyond your comprehension <laughs> or our comprehension because he says many of the teachers even if they know the answer they cannot express the answer because we lack the faculty uh, to be able to understand the answer. So it requires higher faculties to be activated uh, and higher levels of Kundalini to be activated to be, able to, un uh, to be able to understand the answer. So he says, why talk about it, right? So, so, the, uh, so, the, the, so what Master Chua would say is like, it's like, it's like explaining to a first grader hmm. uh, what a PhD is. So a first grader asks you, what is a doctorate? You know, what is a PhD? So then you look at the first grade and you say, look, a PhD. Uh, a I got PhD, it. <laughs> right? so, so because the first grader at that point does not uh, have the faculty yet uh, to understand what it is to study in school, university and uh, post-doctorate after that and PhD. But as the first grader goes into second grade, third grade, emotionally mental develop, they develop the faculties to understand on their own some of these things and it's very easy for them to grasp it. So that's what uh, Master Cho would talk to us about. I think for me, just tends to- He was more blunt and being more nice. <laughs> so it Even sometimes uh, we take it as just follow simple instructions given yeah, by Master Cho, that's, that's it. Good to question. It's good to question because um, you have to follow simple instructions. Yeah. So when dealing with any spiritual teacher, you have to be extremely receptive because you might know a certain amount of truth or what you consider truth, but you might get another perspective of that. Or by adding that extra ingredient, you might get something else, right? Uh, so, uh, so it's good to absorb everything, but at the same time, while you're absorbing everything, you discern everything. So yes. sometimes people uh, misunderstand following simple instruction in uh, they, they understand it as following blindly but that's not following blindly that means when you're given an instruction now if you're given an instruction arhatic yoga and it's beyond your reach it's like for example you're not qualified to make a decision so if a medical doctor tells you okay you have to do this you know no metal in the mri scan or you have to do this 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 before the procedure you you have to follow it to a certain extent because they have the qualification to give the technique or the the procedure but if um, so if you don't understand the technique on a much deeper level, it's better to follow the instructions very carefully because they've been designed for you to be spiritually developing in a very safe manner. So, uh, so that's why, because everything balances, everything is calculated and given. Thank you so much, Amit, for such a nice explanation. <laughs> Yes, and don't uh, don't think that your questions are silly or you know shouldn't be asked. It doesn't matter. Just ask your question. If we have the answer, we give it to you. If we don't, we don't know. Uh, and sometimes it might uh, might just be something very very simple that we can easily explain to you. Yeah. So because you so people, you, both of you, you just make all those all these complicated <laughs> things. Uh, you explain in such a simple way that. At this level, we can understand so many things, you know. So be it. Thank you. <laughs> you, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Today, so that. Yes, no, no, no. We for... still have birth. We haven't finished with birth. Yeah. Oh, 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 I was waiting for yeah. that. <laughs> You're waiting for that. Don't worry, it comes yeah. to all of us. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm just going to mute everybody. Virendra, we'll come to you a little later.
All right. So I'm just going to breeze through uh, birth again, just, just to see to it that we're all in the same page. So we're basically talking about the etheric body and it's very different from the way the astral body and the mental body are created. Uh, so just a reminder that this particular body is built in advance and sometimes looks like, you know, uh, a, a kind of a doll that's hovering over the mother who's going to give birth to a baby. And at some point as she goes in. Now, interestingly, this so-called etheric uh, body, there are two things to it. One is it's actually a thought form that's created, the question that you asked us earlier, uh, by the four devas uh, who are in turn responsible for uh, four different uh, etheric subplanes. Now, interestingly, the the creation of this etheric uh, double is the, the mold is basically the, the being itself. The being uses the itself as a mold to create uh, the etheric double. Yes. And in the etheric double, there That's are... That's a concept of thought form, right? If yeah. you remember from sex elephants, was it sex elephants or somewhere? When you think of something, actually, there's a picture of it. If you zoom inside, there's a picture of what you're thinking about. So if I think of a burger... If you know how to read the thought form, you'll zoom inside and you'll see a picture of a burger. It's literally like, you know, those Archie comics or those comics that you see. So it's like that. Now, the thing is, uh, most people don't know how to create a, 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 a clear thought because most people, most of the time, don't even know what they want. <laughs> All right. So, um, so there was one person, he was observing somebody reading a newspaper and uh, he saw this thought form coming out of his aura. And because he had created a thought while he was reading, he created an opinion and it was very fuzzy and it just fizzled out maybe after maybe a few meters. It's like a deflated balloon. It just fizzled out because the power of the thought forms come from two factors. Am I supposed to talk about that? No, no. Anyway, the first factor is clarity. So it has to be very clear. And most people don't know how to create a clear thought form. So, so generally. Yeah, that's with birth, all right? <laughs> so, so this is the thought about... form of the thing. So can you imagine it's not the thing, level it's of skill? <laughs> no, they, they create the thought form together, right? Correct. Can you imagine, if it's a thought form, can you imagine? That's why it's beyond our comprehension how clear the, 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 the visualization has, the, you know, everything is, anyway. You know, it's like when you learn to paint and draw, uh, when you start doing it in school, for example, when you look at little kids, when they draw uh, you, they'll just draw like a potato and there are just like these four things coming out and you are daddy and mommy <laughs> and you're supposed to be very happy with that drawing because that's the way they see, you know, uh, the representation in, in drawing form. But as you become an artist, for you, every detail is very, very important, right? And when you look at an artist, a piece of work and you say it's amazing, they will still see faults in it. <laughs> Correct. Uh, so the point is, uh, Master Chow would say that when he was talking about these great masters, especially in China, who would help their students get to a point where they, they are amazing on different levels, right? Literature, warfare, blah, blah, blah. Uh, one of the things that they have to do is actually literally draw. So when there's something there, you have to draw so that you get to recognize the details. And that's what Amit is referring to. So when a thought form is created, the details of that being that you want to create is so crucial, right? It's very important that they can actually figure out, like, for example, what is the color of the eye, right? What type of They have hair, to be able to read the, the, seed, the seed and produce the, the plant. Yeah. And so uh, moving on. So, so basically, you're talking about the mold. The mold is uh, basically the elemental itself that uses it. And then there's what you call color. The color is basically the qualities that that soul will then uh, get uh, part of the uh, part of that soul right so the qualities are basically the color so depending on the different qualities a person has there are different colors and different forms and uh, uh, and and sorry the colors and then the form is part of again the plan that is there in that physical permanent seed yes now the uh, initial form that is created or the initial mold let me put the word mold there the initial mold that is created is basically for that fetus to grow into that form Right. So basically till the time the baby comes out of the mother, that birthing process, there's one form. And then the second form unfolds out of that till the child becomes much bigger. And so they say, uh, depending on the colors and the form and things. Now, if there isn't too much to be put into this this um, this form, then the. Uh, then the being or the elemental actually leaves earlier 
allowing then the incarnated soul that comes in just before the birthing process, right? So according to Master Chua, it's at the seventh month. And I think rit ritualistic uh, in most, uh, in most uh, customs around, especially Southeast Asia, uh, Asia and, and Middle East, I think it's usually the seventh month. And so that's the time that the incarnated soul of the Jivatma takes control of all the forms that it has. And so at that point, if the, the form that's created by the, uh, the being or the elemental is ready with nothing else to be created, then it leaves and allows the incarnated soul to take over. However, if there is more complex things to be created within that form, then the elemental might stay behind till the, the, the form takes on till about the seventh year of that being. Right? Honestly, so that I didn't baby, understand that part at all. So, so it stays there to start creating, I, in this case, it says something called limitations, but I, I'm thinking all qualities within that child, uh, the more advanced it is, maybe it requires many more other things to be created. And so the, the form continues, the mold continues to, remem to remain till maximum of around seven years of age. And this is very crucial in many of the esoteric uh, teachings as well. That's also called the first cycle of any child. So that first cycle is the seven year cycle, right? So that's the, that's the one that is associated with form, with physical form, whether it's, uh, it's a boy or a girl, wherever you are, you notice that's when the baby is actually beginning to develop all aspects of the physical form. Yep, it's still then that uh, maybe the, the being is there and then after that, it hands it over to the uh, in, incarnated soul. Can we finish all of this? We went all the way till here. Yeah, end. and so uh, coming yeah, to towards, uh, yeah, I am towards the end only. Today, Amit is in a hurry. Okay, so no, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> so keeping those two <laughs> accesses, you, right, yeah. yes, the access has, like you said, the rays, and it has the karma. Now, uh, keeping again the mold in mind. Remember, the mold is not just uh, the the form of the elemental, but the etheric matter that is required to create that etheric body for the baby that is to come, the matter is taken from the mother. And so the reason why they say, I'm almost in the second last paragraph, the reason why Master Cho also recommends that the woman who's pregnant has to be in an environment where she is thinking and feeling positive things. Because that truly influences, here they're talking about the etheric matter, but it also influences the, the fetus being created and the emotional body and the mental body of the fetus as well. Remember, if the energy body is really refined, then the soul that's attracted will also have to be of, the, of a similar vibration. You can't have a, a soul that is, if I can use the word uh, gross coming in, and then the energy body is refined. It cannot be so. So obviously like attracts like. And so as the mother becomes more and more refined, and that's the reason why Master Cho, for example, tells a woman she has to read literature, she has to read holy books, she has to read mathematics, management, everything possible. Now, and if you don't understand it, I remember one of the Acharyas said, because I didn't have time, he says, it doesn't matter if you didn't have time, just keep opening the pages and keep looking at it, right? Because even that visual kind of goes in. And the problem is uh, we don't realize it, but that influences you Right? And if it influences you, that is all your bodies, it's going to influence the matter that is used to continue to create the etheric body of the, of the baby. And so it says it is important that the mother uh, supplies her body only with purest materials. Yes. And then the, the being in charge, um, there's a lovely book by Leadbeater, I think, uh, what is it called? No, Jeffrey Hudson. Okay. The, the, book, the book that I, uh, I read uh, is by Leadbeater. It's a really nice book. I have it here. I'll bring it in a bit. Birth? It's, no, 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 it's not birth. It's ah, okay. Then I don't know. I yeah, thought you were talking about birth. No, no, I wasn't talking about birth. All right. And so uh, to continue with that. And so now the thing is when the mother starts to think and feel, she's going to influence the child. And here, interestingly, they say, you know, for example, if you want to have a very handsome uh, boy or if you want to have a very beautiful girl, then the thoughts that you have, right, as a mother, influences those features as well of the child, correct? Uh, but I think also it's important, the kind of music you listen to, uh, the kind of things that you watch, which also influence rather than not only just reading, but also what you see and hear influences the energy that affects the child. And so it goes on to say here that uh, the, the direction will be the thoughts of the mother and uh, the thought forms which float around her. 
So it's not just her, it has to be even the thought forms around her. So even if she's trying to be really positive and she's, she's trying to do whatever she can to create positive thoughts, but people around her don't have positive thoughts about her or baby that can also get affected. So that's why they usually send the girl back to the mother's house where hopefully the environment is more positive than where she was. Right. So then the thought form that she has, you know, she's been pampered, she's been loved and cared for. And so that's the thought and the feeling she has, which will influence the baby that is yet to come. And lastly, to remember that it's not just the etheric body, but remember the other two bodies are also being prepared. It's only the etheric that is cre uh, created in advance. So once the etheric goes into the womb of the, the mother to start creating the physical form, then the astral body, yes, the astral body also comes uh, into contact with this at a very early stage. Uh, Master Chow mentions around two weeks, yes. And then the mental body comes, uh, say, around four weeks later. And so the mental body, the astral body, and the physical body are being created. Now, remember, we said that the child could have qualities. Uh, for example, they might be a very irritable child, might be a very lazy child. Now, to have certain things, or a musician, for example. So at that point, when those qualities have to be created, the body needs to have certain Yes. certain specifications that will influence the child, correct? And so the body will have to have a certain type of vocal cords. And so as they're preparing it, remember the etheric form, that mold when that uh, being creates it will have to have the plan to have this type of a vocal cord. Or, or for example, for the person to be super active, to have certain types of bone structure or mus muscular structure, which will help them get to the point where they have to. Yeah. So in the mold, yes, all it doesn't really create qualities of uh, emotions. That is that comes to the astral and the mental. But to remember that the mold needs to have certain plans incorporated into it to help to make it really final. Okay. Um, if you see the um, there's one thing that's concerning me. Uh, the seven-year-old paragraph, I didn't understand. <laughs> All right, I, I don't get it anyway, because I cannot validate this anyway, because the, it starts with something that's very doubtful for me, because it says, although the elemental is in charge of the body from the first. All right. The ego only comes into contact with his future habitation later, sometime before physical birth. Okay. Now you're talking about the ego. Uh, which is actually the higher soul, not the incarnated soul. They did not say personality. So the personality comes in the seven months of pregnancy, not the, not the ego. All right. Now, this is not, in, in my point of view, correct. Uh, maybe they were not allowed to reveal it or what, but you, uh, the life cord is established when the, uh, uh, the egg is fertilized by the sperm. Because without that life cord, there's nothing, as you learn in death, to hold the cells together. Okay, so the elemental has the power to put it all in place, but it is the life energy that comes on the life cords that will hold the cells together, which will integrate everything and make it one, you know? So there are separate, different now, over the course of this chapter, we're seeing now several uh, factors that influence the etheric building of the etheric body. Number one, here you have the higher soul, all right? That, even if they don't say, I know that to be true because, for some reason, I know that to be true, all right? Uh, even Masucho has told us many times. Number two, um, the elementals um, through the laws of karma, that is another factor in the building of the etheric body. The third factor is the mother, okay? And the fourth factor, maybe the astral and the mental. Um, now, um, now, in the elemental through the laws of karma, that is on another level, your destiny, okay? Because all, your karma has to work out in such a way that it manifests your destiny and you learn something and you evolve, <laughs> all right? It's not a punishment, it is evolutionary in nature, okay? So that is, uh, that is what I'm talking about. I'll just explain it. Now, when you say etheric matter for the infant body, now, okay, what else do you say? The, where, however much time is required to develop the limitations needed the elemental may retain its position under the body is until the body is uh, seven years old. When they say develop the limitations needed, I wonder whether they're talking about uh, changing the design because it's defective. 
Sorry, my mistake. This is the book I was referring to. Yes, by <clears throat> Jeffrey Hudson. <clears throat> the one he mentioned. <clears throat> I, th I thought it was like Peter for some reason. My memory is still quite good. <laughs> anyway. You sometimes tend to lose a little bit of memory when, you, when you're pregnant. So some of it is lost. Now, okay, so Hopefully I'm going to talk about this. Okay. Now, um, the etheric matter for the infant. So, so where, so because we require the limitation, the elemental may retain its position until the body is seven years old. So that could be karma. Anyway, we'll skip that. I don't think that's important. The next one is the etheric uh, matter for the infant body is taken from the body of the mother. Um, can you put the pic? Just Google miracle of birth by Jeffrey Hudson. And what do you want to do with it? All right. Uh, nothing. She wants to put the pick up on this. Oh, anyway, okay. let me just talk. Otherwise, we're not going to finish the already seven. Um, Sonia, your question about what is the second factor? Uh, that is in uh, Kriya Shakti by Grandmaster Chokok Sri. Uh, yeah. It's a course. And also, uh, Balachandra, I think you asked with reference to does a person, uh, does the baby actually choose the parents? Yes. That's in achieving oneness with the highest soul. I spoke about this in the last uh, uh, anyway, you continue last uh, session, right? I said, you're not going to drop there. If you want to, uh, you have a certain destiny, you're going to create your plan and then you're going to choose where is the best place and where is the best uh, environment where you can manifest that destiny. Just like you want to join a college, you want to work somewhere, you want to become an accomplished engineer. What would be the best company to work with where you'll have maximum growth? So the same way you're looking at uh, which parents would give you maximum uh, potential based on the destiny of that incarnation, all right? Uh, and based on the uh, destiny, the uh, ray and the subray of the incarnated soul is um, created. Now, um, etheric matter, okay, from the mother. Now I have noticed, this is very important, okay? Uh, because I've noticed over and over again, you have to understand the one, it's, it all started when, um, I had a couple of friends and colleagues who were delivering babies uh, much more, a little bit more later in their life, maybe not compared to previous generations. So previous generation, I'm not sure of the statistics, I would say anywhere from 18, 19 to 25. Uh, and current generation, maybe it's starting 20, 22. Maybe 20. Maybe 20. But yeah. on average in urban areas, it's usually, mid 20s, late 20s to even 30s. Okay. So I don't know the statistics, but it's definitely much later than what it was before. And I've noticed that as they deliver babies, uh, their body starts to have problems. All right. Um, their physical body starts to have problem. Uh, their musculoskeletal system starts to have problem. Their sex chakra starts to have problem. The lower areas, you know, the for praniculars, the ones that have to do with maintenance and building of the body. So navel, sex, perineum, basic. Um, now, they get criticized initially because the mother-in-law or the mother also would say, look, you had only two babies. I had four or five. <laughs> I was fine, you know, and we were working the whole day, blah, 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 blah. So I noticed this became a pattern. All right. So, there were, so I, I did my own research. And uh, what I understood was, I didn't read this book. I mean, I didn't remember what was written in this book. Now that I read it, it makes sense. But I came to the same conclusion that yes, you have the design in the seed, right? But where does the material come from, right? How are you gonna get that etheric matter? Where are you gonna pull it out from, right? To build that uh, etheric body. Okay, so the, the one of the main sources is the mother because the mother's etheric body is interpenetrating the fetus. So it's the easiest to just take it from there. You know, it's like fruit hanging all over you. You just pluck it and use it, right? Uh, or just raw materials all over your place, right? So now what is the issue? Number one, the body of the mother is automatically moving into a state of um, um, increased, uh, it, it knows because the body has a consciousness of its own. It knows that it's, it's, it's gonna be used as uh, an etheric vessel. Or, or you know a supplier so the first thing that happens is the basic becomes big the main main becomes big all right for pregnant women of course the neighbor now what happens with that is uh, if you know if you've done the advanced pranic healing course or you read the advanced pranic healing book you know that's a technique called master healing technique 
So the, the, the mother is in a constant state of master healing technique. So for pregnant women, they're absorbing maybe double, triple the amount of ground prana from the lower parts of their body, uh, around their body, and distributing it compared to pre women who, before pregnancy. All right. Now, the danger in that is if you're in that state for several months, you're prone to hypertension. So one of the things that I've seen doctors, uh, gynecologists check or very careful with when women are pregnant is um, the blood pressure because of the activated Ming Min. All right. So now you need uh, now you don't need that much air prana. You need more ground prana for the building. OK, because to build bones, muscles, tissues, uh, cells requires ground prana not necessarily air prana now let's not go into that <laughs> okay i shouldn't have said that anyway so but it's it's much more you can use air but ground is much more uh, valuable or much more because it comes from the earth right um now now when your body was young have you noticed you have more energy right you see kids they're running around they're in auras bigger right so what 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 happens as you grow older the aura your rate of assimilation, you have this uh, life cord, all right, coming down in your heart. If you remember, if you read the book, Achieving Oneness with a Higher Soul, you notice that this life cord, and the one of the functions of it, we look at the other function when, when we do death, is one of the functions of it is, it emanates a sort, some sort of prana. I think we went through it in the book, right? It's not really prana, it, it, it's say life energy. And what this life energy does is, okay, it holds it together, we look at that in the next chapter, but what it does is it enables the body to absorb pranic energy, okay? It enables the body to, and so imagine energy coming down. So the moment you're born, that's the most. So the most energy coming down from the heart, it radiates outwards and interpenetrates everything and, and makes the, uh, the chakras, the, the cells and pores, everything has the capability to absorb prana very, very fast. Now, as the voltage of that, or as the energy reduces, as you grow older, it's already starting to reduce. So if you clairvoyantly look at a seven-year-old's uh, permanent seat, it's really bright, like, you know, like this, not even like this, like McDonald's red, you know? Yeah, it's like Chinese red, you know, the Chinese red uh, or McDonald's red. So it's really bright, British, British red, <laughs> right? The coats, right? So it's really bright. And then it comes lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay, uh, dimmer and dimmer, more likely. And as it becomes dim, the, um, the ability of the body to absorb prana reduces. So when you are, like I said, 16 year old, maybe you spoke on the phone, you are online, if you are young now, you watch TV the whole night, you could sleep at three in the morning, wake up at seven in the morning and go to school and you're pretty much all right. I mean, you know, not too bad. But as you age from 16 to 25, 25 to 35, you notice that at 35 compared to 25, if you try and sleep for just three, four hours, it's really not enough for most people, right? But you could have done it before, right? That's why you're like, ah, oh, what's happening to me? You now, what's happening is when you were sleeping before for four hours, because of, the mo because of more energy coming out, your body per minute had the ability to assimilate more prana compared to 35 when there's less energy coming out. And uh, obviously since the energy is less, its ability to absorb, say, at 25, you could absorb maybe, I'm just, it's, it's not true, but just to give you an idea, maybe 300 units of <laughs> prana or 1 million units of prana in, in a per, per minute. Imagine at 25, it's only like 600,000. Okay, so the amount has reduced by 40%. So in that four hours, the amount of energy coming to your body is much less. So you wake up much more exhausted. The body doesn't have enough energy to repair itself. Okay, um, and also when you go 35, you're doing much more work. You're mentally using prana, you're doing all this prana. Okay, so uh, now what happens when you wanna give birth, right? Now, men, when, when women were 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, they were uh, pregnant, they're, they're, uh, can you imagine, like for those of you who are pranic healer, you know how many cycles you have to energize, not even to regenerate an organ, just for healing, right? Now, you have to regenerate a kidney. That requires maybe three times a week, right? Seven months, six months, depending nine on your months. skill, to nine months, depending on your skill. Now, can you imagine how much prana will be required to create the whole organ from scratch? <laughs> and the, the whole baby. The whole thing, everything simultaneously. The heart, <laughs> everything, right? And also the etheric component of it. 
my goodness, the amount of prana is uh, incredible. So can you imagine this poor mother is like a being sucked, you know, like it's really like because the life cord is just uh, giving the ability to absorb and it's absorbing a lot. So, so the mother at the age of 22 can absorb much more prana than uh, she could. Uh, 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 luckily, her body's young, so she's absorbing for herself and she's absorbing for the baby. Okay, now as the baby, uh, as the but now supposing so the, the body, uh, so the person delivers and she, she recuperates very fast because her uh, rate of assimilation is, is much faster. But now imagine a person is say the body is 40, 41, all right. Uh, because so 40, 41, 42. Now see the, see the ages around there. The rate of assimilation of prana and absorption of prana is much, much less, probably half because the double the age of 20, right? Right. So, so what would happen? Sometimes because they're not able to, uh, because the baby's needs will not change. The baby's going to absorb as much as going to absorb whether you're 20, 30 or 40. So the, the mother's chakras, and organs have to work over time to absorb that prana to supply to the baby and also absorb prana to supply to their own organs. And then in the, in the long run, what happens is if you overwork uh, equipment, the equipment can start to malfunction. <laughs> it starts to overheat. It starts to have problem, right? So, um, so this equipment is getting overheated. Now, sometimes if the person is body is too old, combined with stress, combined with other things, this is considering the organ is or the chakra is working efficiently. Now, if that uh, uh, chakra is not working efficiently, the perineum is congested, the basic is congested, then the soles are dirty. Then what was going to happen is that this uh, the amount of energy cannot is, is even more reduced. And then what happened is more energy is given to the baby, less energy is used for the uh, mother. So after can you imagine this happening for one month, two month, three month, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, after nine, and then you end with so much prana to push the baby out. <laughs> so that is massive amount of energy. So that's why if you're not sure, you might end up with physical depression, all right? Or what will happen is afterwards, although the baby is gone, the body is damaged already. So the basic was not the same. Uh, if you look at the basic chakra before pregnancy, after pregnancy, it's like it's been uh, gone through a battlefield and come back. <laughs> you know, it's not even like it's not uh, it's not elastic and robust anymore. It's like a station wagon, like a chugging, uh, you know, the 1800 movies, the rickety wagons. So it's 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 not even. <laughs> Don't, don't visualize that for the woman. <laughs> no, no. And don't tell your wife that if she's pregnant. <laughs> I never told her. It's, it wasn't like that. No, I so, know. Uh, and he, he started processing all this only after we had our baby. So. I was observing. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I, I think it's interesting because so, we've had grandmothers, at least I have, and she's given birth to 11 kids. Oh. And, and you wonder how she survived after 11 kids. I, I think like every year she's producing. Uh, so Vani, you said, yes, it will crash. I think in the case of Noor Jahan, she crashed. Right, the There's last baby she, people. yeah, she gave birth to a baby. I know uh, Shah Jahan loved her so much, but that's it. That's all the body could do. Yeah, gave we could birth. see how much she loved. <laughs> <laughs> One, two years of continuous, two, 20 babies, like two, two, two years, you know, it's one per month. So. Wow. So, so, so it does happen. And uh, the sad thing is also the reverse. We are talking about 40, but I'd, I'd also like us to go back to the early uh, marriages where little girls are married off really early and uh, at, not developed. yes and they're 14 16 they're not yet fully developed and not just on the energy level also on the physical level whatever the mother takes there's a fight between the mother and the baby and guess who wins the baby wins and and that is really the toughest thing so either that that range which is also risky and also the 40 to 45 is also risky when you go to any doctor, she's going to tell you, listen, you know, no problem with trying pregnancy, but it's a high risk pregnancy. And now we understand it from the energy. So component. the question is, how do you utilize this? All right. So that's why in cultures, that's why in cultures now, now the idea is, um, look, what do you need? Uh, especially if you're young, you know, you're not supposed to be doing master healing technique on kids. <laughs> so if you're going to be having a mingman like that, then it's a problem now. How do, you, how do you fix this situation? Now, this is not only the case. Your body might be 35, but your aura is strong because you've been meditating for a long time. You're doing yoga. 
and all these things. So your body is very strong. So there might be no issue. I'm talking in general, okay? In, in general, I, I've noticed this and I've asked a lot of women this. I've asked at least, I've been going to different parts of Karnataka, Rajasthan. I've been asking different types of women from different ethnicities and uh, countries. And they've all said, yeah, after my baby, I had this problem, that problem. My bone had issue. My, uh, my bladder has issues. Everything has, you know, so, so why can't the body repair itself? Because it's overworked already, okay? So that's why I think in many cultures, what they used to do is they used to give, now you can get prana from different places, by the way. You can get prana from food. You can get prana from other people also. <laughs> you can get prana from trees. So you can start going and uh, hugging a tree, uh, sit in nature, um, you know, and uh, also you can, uh, that's why in certain cultures, they were given certain food, you know, specific food, specific food uh, uh, when they're pregnant, you know, uh, nuts, a few things that are high prana foods. All right. So the prana, even if they're not absorbing enough, comes from the food. And then the overall, the body has enough prana to sustain both, uh, both life, both uh, souls or whatever, both bodies. Body. So, so that is important. Now going to the mother-in-law's house, I don't know whether that's a good idea. Okay. Number one, look, you need a good source of prana. Your husband is a good source of prana your partner right so when you're pregnant you can hug them you did this so you contribute now if you leave your husband or your wife okay go towards the end you know so if you leave your husband and your wife and you go to your mother mother's house your poor mother already used the prana to give to you now you want her to donate for your kid also <laughs> mother's like oh come i'm tired <laughs> so take your husband to your mother's yeah, house, take your husband to your mother's house. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um, or get your mother to come to your house that yeah way. so you can get through, through, you can get through certain food you can get through certain things look it's something to keep in mind i might be mistaken but reading this and i've seen at least 10 15 20 cases like this because many many of the young women today they've been talking to me i don't tell them anything because you know they have no background in energy but they say oh you know what i'm freezing my eggs this is very popular in the states they freeze their eggs so they can use them maybe later so they freeze their own, you know, the eggs. Yes. So, um, so, so that they are looking at it only from a physical viewpoint. Yes, you'll get pregnant. Great. And then what? <laughs> you, if you don't, you have to at least consider the energy component, at least have it from food, at least have some high prana people around you. <laughs> All right. So, or go to, um, so, so go. That's why the contribution of the mother is very, very high. Because, uh, because of the um, amount of energy that they provide to make the baby. The husband uh, doesn't, <laughs> you know, uh, just one time. Uh, contribution. You know, contribution. <laughs> <laughs> so, but after the birth, then yeah, you can do something. Hit it, got it, done it. Okay. So now, one important thing that I used to talk about, just to conclude this chapter about all these thought forms and looking at beautiful things. One thing I never understood, because if you read the book, Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul, it's, um, it says that the, the design of your uh, features, everything, because if you read, it says, uh, unless the element is charged with some special development in the way of features, such as unusual beauty or the reverse, right? That is if it's karmic. But in, in most, in most uh, cases, your eyes, your nose, everything, how your features will be, the color of your skin, your lips, the thickness, everything, it's all encoded in the seed. It's all programmed by the higher soul in conjunction with these uh, beings, okay? We're gonna call them beings. Um, so, uh, so the programming is done by them. So everything is already done, not only for your physical, but eventually when you read the other books, even the astral, the mental, okay? Uh, everything is pre-programmed, all right? Uh, but especially the physical, the etheric body and the physical body. Now, my question was this. Why do people, why does the uh, mother need to see beautiful things, hear beautiful music, read beautiful things, or, you know, must not only see spiritual books, but books on management, books on uh, different subjects, you know, uh, strategy, strategy um, business. Uh, so why would, um, why would reading that um, and avoiding, you know, violent movies, violent experiences, if everything is already in the seed, the program's in the seed, then why does it matter? You know, why does it matter? That, you know, that was something I would wonder. So the conclusion that I came out with, uh, and I could be wrong, is um, I was noticing there was a hotel being built, right? So 
the hotel being built, yes, the design comes from the architect. All right, the design comes from the architect. Every detail comes from the architect. How the wall will look, what the design, the moldings will look, how the light should even fall on it, the shade of the paint, everything is designed uh, by, the, uh, by the architect and by the interior people. However, the quality of materials used will tell you the final product, right? You might get the best architect to design something, you use terrible cement, you use poor quality sand, you, you, you use poor quality materials, it's gonna have cracks and it's not gonna be very good looking for too long, okay? So when a woman uh, looks at say, um, a very graphic or violent uh, or um, horror movie, for example, what, she experiences fear, she f experiences anxiety for some time, these thought forms of fear are generated in the body, all right? And what, what, what material, is used by the baby to create the different bodies, the mother's material. So that material will be of lower quality. Now compared to if she's meditating once in a while, reading nice books, having good thoughts, the material of her etheric body, the material of her astral body, the material of her mental body will be very, very high quality. So then the quality of the body, although the design will be from the seed, the quality of construction will be very, very high. Okay, so that is uh, something to consider. I remember there was this lady who came, uh, we were watching this movie called Kill Bill and I was wondering why, oh, <laughs> yeah, she came, uh, you know, she wasn't an Indian lady and I was wondering, really you want to watch this movie because we've already seen Kill Bill 1, so Kill Bill 2 I assumed would be on, on similar, uh, similar lines and halfway after the movie she says, I'm so sorry, I'll have to leave. I said, yeah, please leave. <laughs> You know, I totally understand why she needed to leave. It was it was way too gross uh, to watch, even uh, for me at that point. Now, now coming to some of your questions, uh, you're talking about we're almost already done. We've not even started death. We didn't start death. We have not even done with birth. Okay. No, we're so, done. I'm done. So one of the things that I, I realized uh, when, when we look at uh, birth, certain bodies, right? Certain mothers, uh, like you've said, some of them have had stillborn. Some of them have had even like my grandmother, 11 kids, and she was still strong. Yeah, strong going, tandurust, as you would say. No problem at all. Um, even when she died, she didn't have any physical problem. She just went to bed and that's it. She never woke up. So there are some women who can handle it and probably also the nutrition that they uh, got when they were much younger. But there are others who do get affected. And I presume today, in today's life, I remember uh, even my gynecologist would tell me, she says, a lot of youngsters cannot even go for natural birth today. They invariably need a C-section. Not because, you know, their bodies need a C-section, but their bodies cannot really take it. So though they look, you know, amazing from the outside, the quality of what they have inside is not easy enough. And so many more, it's, it's more frequent today, I believe, compared to my mother's generation for a C-section, right? Of course, luckily with healers and other things, you can get healed and come out walking, uh, like you mentioned, uh, some of you have mentioned here, you can start walking the next day. But overall, um, it is difficult. Uh, and most women today cannot have like four and five kids. It, it is. Because... I think if you talk to a woman in today's and it's five kids. She's like, <laughs> you, she's did like it. you take it to someone else. <laughs> this is all I can produce. One, two, that's it. More, no way. <laughs> right. And it's very different from the old days. But coming back, yes, um, and for me personally, I, I did notice that there is a big difference uh, when you go through this whole process and doctors are very, very careful today. They don't even allow you to put on weight beyond, say, 12 kilos. So there are a lot of restrictions with reference to uh, what you're doing physically, but energetic is what we wanted to add today, right? Uh, so there could be people who have high BP. There are some of us who never had BP during pregnancy, and there are some, some who could have low BP as well. Right, and some of the questions that you've asked is all part of what you call uh, Master Chua's achieving oneness with the highest soul course. I think uh, you can read the book. Yeah, so you can even buy the book. Very easy. If you're from a, a certain state, uh, you can find out where the local place is. You can they'll done it or yeah, they'll see it to you. Worldpranichealing.com. You can go there and see if there is a, a center in your area or a foundation in your state, and they could probably send it across to you. That's one way that uh, I think you could take care of it. Um, Right. So some sort of chavan prash. Yes. The, they give is. right and food oh, nuts. Oh, and yes. This, this specific if you read the advanced pranic women. healing book, you'll notice that um, the, the nuts, fruits, uh, fresh vegetables, they have high, high prana content. 
So if they have high prana, because if you heat something, it, it destroys the prana, it, it, it reduces the prana considerably. The vitamins and nutrition is there, but the prana is, uh, gets damaged with heat. Yeah. So uh, in, in food. So we were talking about these various bodies and the incarnated soul coming in the seventh month. That is more or less for the average person. It could change for some others, right? So more evolved people, maybe it changes. Uh, but that's what is written in the books and that's what Master Chua has mentioned to us. Why, Why is it like that? It is mother. like that. I can answer that, but okay, go uh, ahead. it depends if... Why uh, is it only the seventh month? Why not earlier? Why not earlier? Okay. It's like this. The preparation. Because you have to understand, to, under, to answer this question, you have to have a certain esoteric background, or at least you, would have, you, you should have at least read the Achieving Oneness book. Um, now, why is it the seven month? Okay. You see this. Uh, now, I'm taking into consideration that you have a certain spiritual background, so you know about the spiritual anatomy. You have the divine spark. You have the higher soul, which extends a portion of self, and you have the incarnated soul. Right? Now, the question is, why do you have it this way? We don't know, but we can what do they say? Uh, speculate. Uh, your body, your cells, at the current rate of evolution can only handle a certain amount of voltage. Remember, we spoke about this when we were talking about Kundalini, right? Your higher soul can also handle a certain amount of voltage. So you have to step down the energy for it to become safe, for it to move forward, all right? For it to, uh, for it to be safe. Uh, and so that portion, when they show in the class, the uh, you know, picture going in that that has voltage. Now, if you say the word spiritual energy, it is uh, like we mentioned in the previous session. It's pure energy with consciousness, but the word energy implies that it has voltage. Okay, it, it say it has spiritual voltage, right? And that's why it's uh, connected to light, to fire, to all these kind of things, illumination. So it has voltage, brightness. All right. Now, um, when the higher soul. Uh, the want to extend a portion of itself, even though it's a small portion of the entire part of the high soul, that portion, what we call the personality or the incarnate soul, it also has voltage. Okay. Now, if the high soul comes in the first month of pregnancy, what do you think is going to happen to that small little, you know, it's like what? <laughs> They just call it a tadpole or what? Not first one. It's not even that big. Oh, yeah, it's just whatever. It, 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 I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. But whatever, it's small, right? Can you imagine that much spatial voltage occupying that much? Uh, that What will happen to the cells? <laughs> right? Now, you have to understand that when the incarnate cell comes down, it anchors into what we call the 12th chakra and it interpenetrates everything. So from the tongue, it goes down and out. Right, so it interpenetrates the higher principle, interpenetrates the lower principle. So it goes through your mental body, your spiritual, your your emotional body, your etheric body, your physical body, everything. Now, you heard what Sumi said: the uh, emotional permanent seed, or what we call the emotional permanent atom in Theosophy, and the mental permanent seed. They all come in within weeks between each other. So within the first one and a half months, or first, you know, several weeks, you have all three bodies being built simultaneously. Okay. Now, if it comes on the third month, so basically the logic implies that that amount of voltage has to come in at a point where the mental body, the emotional body, the etheric body, the physical body is developed enough, built enough for it to handle and process that voltage of the incarnated soul. And based on what we see, that amount of uh, safety comes at the seventh month. Of pregnancy so by the seventh month the enough uh, of the physical body enough cells are made enough of the etheric body enough of the emotional body enough of the mental body is created so that it comes down and occupies all these vehicles and doesn't overwhelm the bodies yeah doesn't explain otherwise there's no point <laughs> right now when it overwhelms the body the baby is usually still born or usually if there's no uh, if the incarnate soul doesn't lodge properly Okay. okay. Uh, now, uh, that's what Master Choa told us. Um, and also, um, what was I going to say? I'm going to say something important. Mm. Can I add something? Yeah, Maybe. sure. All right. So, uh, one of the things to remember is that's why when a baby, the fetus, is seven months, the survival rate is much higher after that, not before that. Because then the highest, the high soul has sent down the incarnated soul, the Jivatma is already occupying this, and it can then take control of what needs to be done to survive and to go. But uh, when you talk about a miscarriage, usually happens earlier. 
right? And even in abortion, you don't have to worry about it because it's yeah, just, yeah, it's, because it's, it's just got to do with creation of the, literally only the bodies. The soul hasn't come in, yeah? Okay, so what I wanted to say is, it's like you are a person. You are building a house, but the house is just, they started building the foundation, they built only the shell. And then you go in there and say, I'm going to stay here, <laughs> right? You can't stay there because the house is not yet developed enough to satisfy your needs and uh, keep you alive, right? The house is not uh, ready yet. So you have to wait till the house is fully almost ready. Sometimes we move in when it's not completely ready, but almost ready. Yeah. So we have to move in at a point when the house is developed enough or built enough and finished enough so that it can, uh, you know, cater to our needs and help us survive in that. So that is, that is why usually it's on the seventh. All right. For those of you who need to leave to Sri Ram's session, please go ahead. I'm just going to go quickly to some questions yeah, and then we'll just, just end. Uh, we'll end with the uh, birth for today. We finished uh, that. Uh, we finished the show in crash and the deliveries. So you're looking at this one? No. So wouldn't the choice of the mother be... Yeah, the higher soul. Uh, yes, which will, it could be the higher soul's, um, you know, place where the mother actually watches violent movie or actually is physically abused, for example, or goes through some trauma. Uh, that is definitely there. It's part of the karma of the child. Because there is what you call family karma. There is also what you call individual karma. So being in that family, born to a mother who is uh, abused or who's gone through some really big trauma, is part of what that child will go through. Right. And so that is part of the plan for this uh, young uh, child who's going to be born to that family. So that is basically. Um, you see, you have a higher soul, but you also have the incarnate soul, which has free will. And then you have the chakras that has a consciousness of its own. That's what we call the lower self. The lower self. OK, shall we end? I think we're OK, no? What is the impact of parents' karma? This is a long answer. <laughs> there is any specific reason for birth of premature babies? I have no idea. Premature, it, it, like I said, anything that happens after the seventh month, uh, between seven and nine is called premature, but most of them do survive if they've reached seven, right? But earlier, it's usually more tough. No, but I, I, I don't know. I've not looked into why babies are premature. Nothing that... Okay, so it's just in a hurry to come. Our son wasn't in a hurry to come. He stayed for too long. <laughs> and we had well, to say, yeah. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. <coughs> Excuse me. Shall we end with this? Yes, Priya, the husband is right. In, in my case, many times he is right. So no issues with that. Uh, so how does a baby come to the parents? Uh, right, we spoke about it. It's all in the seed as well. And what else? Anything else I've left out? No, yeah, no, no. the story of Abhimanyu is true. It, it is part of uh, what we're talking about. So I'm just saying thank you. Oh. All right. Shall we? Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll end and uh, we'll see you after one week. We'll see you on the 27th. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll be here on the 27th. He may not. And no, no, he doesn't week. want to be here. Only one week. You said 10 yeah, because Noel has start school. Yeah, yeah. You see, if we have to do it on Monday, then Sunday doesn't count as Sunday, right? Technically speaking. Although I don't really read it on Sunday that much. Anymore. He doesn't. He does something else. <laughs> uh, we're off for one week. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you on the 27th. Yeah, so let's just close our eyes, connect onto the palette. The Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chara Cox, we love Maha Deloji Mary. To all the great ones, to all the invisible helpers, beings here. To all the angels and beings of communication, of theosophy, thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your patience with us. Thank you for helping us have a greater and deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. Please help us to continue to assimilate this and use it to help others and ourselves. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Atma Namaste. Yes, uh, yes, happy vacation because 27th, our son starts school. So uh, it's our last little bit before we start off. Thank you, everybody. Uh, see, you see you on the 27th, 6.30. Yeah, bye-bye. I'll take off that uh, mute in case anybody wants to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye -bye.
many questions next time <laughs> yeah you can write it down in some yes definitely now enjoy your vacation with sun <laughs> yes we'll do it's not a bangalore so we're definitely only in the four walls of the house between the first and the second floor the family where we'll, it's yeah. not it's not the uh, it's not the place where we are we, sh- we should enjoy that's it Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye